I wanna show you my ideal folder structure for design projects. Now I've been on the quest for an ideal folder structure for a long time. Optimal file names, folder structure names, general organization, because things can get out of hand very quickly. Now, first of all, I use Dropbox for every single project. All of my work projects, all of my design files, they live inside of Dropbox. I do use Dropbox Pro, which is like $100 a year or something like that, I don't know. Without further ado, let's just take a peek at what it would look like to set up a new folder inside of Dropbox for a new client project. Let's dig right in. All right, so if I open up Finder here and go to Dropbox Clients, I'm gonna create a new client in here called YouTube, all right? And in case you're not aware, Command Shift N will create new folders on the fly. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder inside of YouTube called Projects. And in that same directory, I'm gonna create a new folder called Contracts. I like to keep contracts and projects separate because a lot of times I will share a project folder with another designer, with a developer, or even sometimes with a client, and I don't wanna throw in the contracts and all the business documents inside of the same folder. So I like to keep those separate, first of all. And I like to have a projects folder because you never know how many projects you're gonna do with a certain client. So let's say inside of this projects folder, we're gonna design an iOS app. Everything inside of the iOS app would be for the iOS app. Now, if we're also gonna do a website, we might, all, we might also have you know, a marketing site folder. Uh, so regardless of the project or the client, this is how I like to structure the initial setup. All right, so let's just do one for now. Command delete will quickly throw away your, your folders if you didn't know. Okay, so inside of the project folder, I always have a design folder. I always have an assets folder and I always have a review folder. I've used a lot of different structures inside of the project folder. Sometimes I'd have sketch folders right in the, the project directory, and sometimes I would have, you know, just slightly different tweaks. Recently, I worked on a project with Dan Mall, and he uses assets, design, and review, and that was really close to what I already had, and I've tried it out for the last three or four projects, and I think this is as simple as it gets, so props to him for helping me tweak this last little section. All right, so inside of assets, I would put anything inside of assets that I get from the client, or you know, if I've got a handful of images or existing icons or fonts, I would put those assets inside of the assets folder, probably inside of another subdirectory. So I might have fonts or images. Uh, we might also have icons or brand guidelines. Anything that would be an asset to this project would go in the asset folder. All right, inside of the design folder. This is where I would break things down by software. So I've got maybe some sketch files, maybe some illustrator files. I might even have some Photoshop documents. And sometimes I might even have an XD file in here. I might have Adobe Animate, After Effects, whatever the software is inside the design folder. That's where I would put all of my software files. And okay, so let's just go ahead and fire up sketch. We'll do a new document. And let's say we're gonna design an iPhone app. So I would go ahead and save this inside of YouTube projects, iOS, design, sketch. And this is, this is another thing that I think is key is file name and structure. So I always do either the client's name or an acronym. Sometimes the acronym is weird and sometimes the clients don't like acronyms. Uh, so just do whatever feels natural for your project. For this one, I would say YouTube, then the type of file that it is, then my initials, and then the version number. So we might do YouTube. Maybe this is our first, uh, our UX document. And then I would do my initials and version 0 0.1. Now I would save this inside of there. And now let's take a look at this. All right, so now we have YouTube UX MDS version 0.1. If I, I would just keep working in this specific document until it got big enough to where it made sense to either rename it into, well, maybe this is the first time user experience. Maybe this is specifically for this feature. I might end up breaking that into several different sketch files once it gets larger. And every time I make a, a decent enough iteration to where I feel like the version number needs to change, 
I would just go ahead and just save a version of that and name it version 0.2. Sometimes if I have shown it to the client and they've signed off, then that's when I might jump up to like 1.0 or 1.1 from there on. And also never, ever, ever throw away your design files. I like to create an underscore archive folder inside of any of the other projects. Uh, that way I can put the older versions inside of the archive. If you're working with another designer or someone else who's gonna have access to these files and they need to collaborate, you can use this as a shared folder and whoever is working from the last file would just grab this file, make a copy, Maybe the initials are N M S and they might change this to version 0 0.3. And that way I know NMS is, is one version, one point version higher than 0.2. That way I know which one is the more recent document. And so if I want to go back into this guy's file, I can dig something out. If I want to go back in here, I can dig that out. And oftentimes you might just end up putting the older ones always in the archive folder so the newest ones are in the root directory and then we might eventually get into where their actual features so maybe this is first time ux and since i'm adjusting this now i might switch to version 1.0 throw that one in the archive folder and maybe now we have maybe this is the profile section and now we have maybe this is the settings however it makes sense for your project to be broken up i always start with one big file and then if it gets too sluggish or if it just makes sense to isolate one of the features then i start breaking it up into multiple files and typically you know try to keep those version numbers like roughly the same it's it's a loose versioning system it's not hardcore uh based on you know a very scientific whatever you know like it, it's just what feels right so whatever feels right for you for version numbers but i would recommend keeping your initials on there and version numbers you know don't use final final extra final for sure final 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 don't ever use final on the name of your file just period just don't use final it'll never be final wow. you know this is one this is 1.0 later it'll be 1.1 1 1.3 1 later when you <laughs> all right so let's say we're getting ready to export our screen for the first time we want the client to review this i'm going to go ahead and find that ios folder and i would always always put my exported assets or exported designs inside of the review folder so we'd go review and then we hit command shift n to create a new a new folder and I always go 2017-02-23rd. I always do the year first, then the month, then the day. That will keep everything nice and chronologically ordered, especially if you're in December and you bleed into January and the year changes, your folder structure won't get all screwed up. So in addition to that, I used to just leave it at date name only, but then if you get a ton of review folders, it's hard to find what you're looking for. So now what I do is name the date and then a little tiny description of what's inside that folder. So I might just do first review or something like that. Something that would help you remember, just a little tag. And so I'm just gonna save hello world. Sometimes I might even put a number on, on the design. Sometimes I'll number them so they're chronologically ordered. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Let's close this file and then we can see now we have our design inside of this folder. All right, so now we have our sketch file in here. We've got our review file in here. So now if I just wanna send the client this specific file, I can right click because it's in Dropbox, copy the Dropbox link, and now I can send it to the client and say design review, whatever you wanna say, and then send that Dropbox link. I'm gonna hit send. So that's gonna send that, that specific file right there. So if I look at this in the browser now, I didn't attach any documents, so now the client can look at this right away. I could also go ahead and copy a link from the entire folder and paste that 
into my email and then when someone clicks on it they can see everything inside of this folder so if i put a bunch of design documents in there i could just email you the link and say hey i'm going to be dumping all my design files in here today check it out so they have the link and here's all the stuff. And then as every day progresses, anytime you wanna send files, you can just send them a link to the folder, to the review folder. That way you never have to attach anything. And if you send an email with an attachment and you're like, oh crap, I forgot that specific design, well just go dump it inside of the folder. For example, if I already sent you this link and we go back to our sketch file and we have oh you know what we really wanted to show you the red version of our hello world screen let's go ahead and export this we'll call this hello world red export to the same folder all right i'm going to save it and now that i've saved it to that folder it's in that file structure already and so now if i come back to dropbox it's right in there so if i sent the email for the review already and i meant to send something else it just it's kind of a nice to be able to slide things back into dropbox as you need it all right let's see what else what else anything else that i'm missing one other, one other quick little tip is if it's an active client an active project i will just grab this little folder here and slide it over here into my sidebar so now i can just quickly access this youtube folder anytime i want to and then a lot of times when i'm finished i might just send someone this ios project copy the dropbox link send it to the client or the developer or whoever it is that needs to get access to everything and then right there you can see assets you know everything's available everything's completely available Everything is just nicely organized inside of these folder structures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy a link to this root YouTube folder, and I'm gonna paste the Dropbox link in the description below, and you can grab it, and you can download it, you can do whatever you want to with it. You can modify it, change it, and I hope it works for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Smash the subscribe button down there. Um, anything else. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Peace out.